Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing a quick video for Ken tonight. And the subject is PID temperature controller instructions. How do you operate these things? It's very complex if you're not used to working with them. Even if you have the instructions, they're absolute Greek, and the information online regarding what some of this stuff is is very limited. So, Ken, to get right to the point, the first thing we need to do for you is to get the thermocouple set up. And the way you get the thermocouple set for the proper thermocouple, in this case, you have a K-type thermocouple. So we're going to want to see this backwards Y symbol. This is a K-type thermocouple. And to access this callout, we go to COD 11. So we hit the set button and we press up on the arrow, the over arrow, and then up again on the arrow, and we hit set. And it brings us directly to the thermocouple settings, and you can see here that we are already set on Y, so we're good to go. So we're gonna hold the set button to get out of this. It will also automatically do that after 30 seconds. Now, to get us to Fahrenheit on your system, we would go to FRU, and the, the, what you're currently set on is 60 hertz Celsius. So we want to go down to number three, which is 60 hertz Fahrenheit. To access that, we can see by the ledger that COD 11 will take us to that call sign. And we go to COD 11 and we come down to FRU. And you can see here I am set at 60 Fahrenheit. You are set at 60 Celsius. 60 meaning hertz. So we are at Fahrenheit now. We're going to set it and hold it there. And you can see we're now reading Fahrenheit. Now, there are some, another setting on your particular unit is the alarm. And anytime you change the process value, you need to change the alarm value. Let's, for example, say we want to change the process value to 110 degrees. To do that, you press the set button and hold it until this happens. Now we're gonna go over with the arrow. It's kind of hard for you to see this because the flashing, but we're gonna set the process value to 110. There we go. Power's kicked onto that. And the temperature is gonna start going up because we have power cranking into the system. Now, our pressure washer didn't kick on though. That's, that's a problem, so how do we get our pressure washer to kick on? We need to set the temperature for the pressure washer, or the, the water pump in your case, at 110. So how do we do that? We go to Alarm 1. To get to Alarm 1, we go to COD 1. So let's go ahead and go to COD 1. And then we're going to come down. Oops, I just passed right through it. I did it again. Alarm one, you see we have it set here at 105. I scrolled over. We're gonna to go to 110 to have them both set. And we're going to back out of this. And now the pressure washer is set to trigger. But it's already went past the temperature, so as we were setting it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the thermal couple to simulate the temperature drop. And when we go below 110, the pressure washer will kick on. And there it goes. Okay, in addition to that, there are also is the alarm settings. We need to go to upper limit alarm. And to do that, we go to COD 11. One over one set, and we scroll down to alarm one, and you see I have it set on number one. So we're gonna hold that and set, and that alarm will now trigger on the upper limit. If It's already set on that in your case, but just in case you accidentally toggled it to something else in your attempt to discover this thing's secrets, then you will wanna go back and Go to upper limit alarm. There is one more setting that you guys need to be aware of. There's heating and cooling. What's the difference? If this machine was currently set in cooling mode, the power to the out would be activated because electricity would be going to the air conditioner to bring this temperature down to the set value. 
when you have it set and heating mode, the energized SSR only takes place when the process value is below the set value. You wouldn't want the heater on when you're already way above temp. So when the temp drops below the set value, then the SSR is energized. So that's the difference between heating and cooling. And to go to that, you go to COD 10. So you're going to go over, up one, set. And we're going to mode. And in this case, it does not read one and zero. It reads uh, yap and yak. Dan, whatever that was. So heating mode in this case is DA. So I'm going to hold it. And that should pretty much fill you in on the alarm and the different modes. So, because your autoclave is now cooling off, the uh, pressure washer boiler pump is on, and your gas boiler solenoid is on. So, we're going to replace the thermocouple back into the heat, and the temperature will rise rapidly. The pressure washer has shut off, and the solenoid to the gas system on the burner has shut down. So, that's pretty much the gist of it for you, Ken. There is one setting I need you to go in and change that may not have been changed, and that is your proportional value. To get the proportional value, you're going to go to COD 10. So we go to over and up and set. We are now at ATU off. We're coming down to the proportional value. I think you're set on five. We're going to want to set that to zero. Also, the integral. I know, I think I've already got the integral set on zero for you and the deviation value. Oh, in this case, I have it set on 10 for some reason. I don't want that. I want nothing. I don't know what that does. I haven't had time to experiment with it. Now, what is all this jazz about? You may find that a simple on-off circuit is insufficient for you. Um, if the temperature swings are too great in some areas inside the autoclave. If you have it shut off completely, it kind of does this here. It'll go on and overshoot the temp a little bit maybe and then undershoot, overshoot, and it cycles out and eventually it can get you set up. If you have those other adjustments on, it can slowly bring the temperature up and land you where you want to be. If you have them misconfigured, it can take too long. And in the case of the elements we just discussed, if you have just the PID controller on, or just that P setting, it'll do this. It'll slowly approach the set temp and it will never reach it. So you have to use the PID and the integral in tandem. The integral takes it from this here, the offset, and brings it up to the set value. How long it takes to do that is based on the level you have that set. And I'm gonna show you the difference here real quick. If your integral is long, it will slowly ramp it into place. If your integral is short, it may be very rapid and may overshoot the temperature. This can be problematic in breweries and uh, temperature sensitive processes and things like that. Now the derivative handles shock or external disturbance. Let's say we add some new electrolyte into the system, some cold electrolyte. The proportional derivative would bring that back up quickly instead of this slowly the way that the PID would. So using those three constituents in tandem gives you this nice activity, but that is not ideal for some people. So if you want your PID controller to simply act as an on-off switch, this is what the hysteria says is also this little band in the top. I set that at zero also on mine. Okay, the temperature's gonna drop. Your pressure washer slash water pump is gonna kick on. And the solenoids to your burner 
is going to kick on. So just remember, when anytime you change this set value by holding this down, you have to also go in to COD 1, Alarm 1, and match that temperature to this set value. And you should be good to go, Ken. So if your name is not Ken, and you came to this video for some in-depth information, and I'm falling short here, I'm going to geek out a little bit, and we'll get down to some details for just a second here. Let's say you're running this temperature sensitive process or the geometry of your system is such that you need to pay better attention to these details. Let's say you want to set the integral and the amount of time it takes for your system to get up to the set point is too long. So you want to adjust it, but if you adjust it too much, then it starts to overshoot and do all this other weird stuff. So let's look at integral for a second. The integral is based on a 3,600 second maximum. That's one hour. It comes set at 100 seconds. So that means that over the course of 100 seconds, it will try to bring that temperature ramp up to the set value. You don't want to do it too abruptly because if your heating element is far away from the thermocouple, you may be way above this the process or set value then, and if it's a temperature sensitive process, you could have damaged product or caused some type of secondary chemical reaction and all types of stuff can happen. So that is the adjustment that handles that. Same thing with the deviation value. If you want to see here, they have it set at 20. So in 20 seconds, this thing tries to bring the temperature back up if it's somehow dropped below some set point. I do not know what any of these things are. I leave them set. But as far as the proportional value, same thing. If you have that increased, it will never get to the process temperature. It will hover directly below it, and this little light will flash on and off and it would just never get to the set value. Auto tuning is a feature where over time, the machine studies the system and looks at how long it takes to heat it back up and it brings it into an optimum time span. I don't know what that time span has to do with some of this stuff here or not. I would imagine you could set every parameter. So that's probably what all this stuff here is. I have not had time to experiment but if you want to get a little bit more control out of your system, you don't want it to be just an on-off switch. These three elements seem to be an area to focus on and the hysteresis. I've also got some strange behavior out of this. Adjusting this can make the system just stop working altogether. So be careful messing with that. It is worth messing with to um, tune the system if you want it to. And I hope this helps out a lot of other people because, man, did this not come easy, this right here. This is like three years of toil. As, like I said, you can write these people a letter and they won't give you instructions. It's, uh, and the information online uses sentences full of words that require a dictionary to interpret, leaving you with more questions than answers. If you're stupid like me, that is. Maybe if you're brilliant and you did understand all that, you wouldn't need to look for any of this information.